Welcome everybody to a call with Dr. Cook. My name is George Wright. I'm the uh, president of Limbic Arc, and we're here. It's today is Wednesday, January 27th, 2020 already. And uh, Dr. Cook, welcome. George, thank you. Good to be here. You know, this is uh, one of my favorite things all month. We certainly look forward to this, especially today. We've got such a great topic today. And uh, let's, uh, we'll get right after it. Isn't it your um, birthday today, George? <laughs> I, I well, should t tell everybody the, the inside joke. Anytime we, anything good happens in George's life, he says, wow, it's my birthday. Is so, it my birthday? Yeah, he's the oldest man in the world. Yeah. Yeah. So yesterday was actually my real birthday. So, um, oh, happy birthday. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm getting, uh, I, my children remind me very regularly how old I'm getting. So, but, uh, yeah. but that's good because we have an anti aging boost, which is great. But uh, that's not what we're going to talk about today, Dr. Cook. We're actually, I've got some really cool things before we get into our topic today. I want to talk about some of the new additions that we have to the Limbic Arc app. This is kind of exciting. We have 24 brand new shiny boost ingredients, and uh, we also have a brand new info boost. And Called motivation. Week, motivation. Yeah. You can see you can see on screen the info the info boost ingredients. But Dr. Cook, uh, we're going to talk about motivation today. Um, why motivation? Well, it's a good thing to talk about. And, uh, you know, back in the olden days, I used to make resolutions. Uh, I don't do that anymore, but I still set goals. Right. And I think we all do that. So we're going to talk about kind of the physiology of motivation and how to achieve goals. Well, it's a new year uh, and we've we've got a lot in front of us and and we all need a little bit of help sometimes uh, motivation to, to keep our commitments and to keep our plans. So I'm really looking forward, not just to the presentation, but also to the info boost and these exciting new ingredients. Um, if you want to see a list of the ingredients in the Limbic Arc app, it's pretty simple to find. Um, just scroll to the bottom of the web page, go to limbicarc.com. And uh, before you get to the, to the footer, it's above the footer, um, there's a little uh, section there that will give you a link to boost ingredients. And you can click there and you can see all of the fabulous ingredients that are just included with your Limbic Arc app. So, um, so Dr. Cook, I, t I tell you, let's, uh, let's talk about motivation. I'm excited to, uh, to, to hear it from a Limbic Arc perspective. All right. I will, uh, let me share my screen here. There, we, there go. we go. See, those are all the things we want to be motivated about, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> Absolutely. Some of the things. Uh, uh, motivation is an interesting thing because if you set a goal, you have to uh, stay with it long enough to achieve it. And it's that stick to itiveness that we call motivation. And let that me... looks like an actual photograph of me down there on the bottom. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I thought of you when I pulled that off the internet and put it on here. <laughs> so here we are on January 1st. And I picked on January 1st, even though I know that what we're into the third or fourth week of the month. And by now we've all broken our resolutions. But, uh, you know, <laughs> on the day one, when you set your goal, you're excited. We've got a woman here. She's got a goal. She's going to get in this new dress. And the first thing that happens is we say, well, what am I going to have to do to achieve this goal? And then the epiphany comes and she says, well, hey, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to get up at five o'clock every morning. I'm going to go down to the gym and work out and my diet is going to be perfect. Right. And so the next day she goes down and buys a nice new pair of sneakers because she wants to be stylish when she gets to the gym. And she gets to the gym and she walks in and sees all these intimidating bodies in there. And, you know, they look, oh my gosh, everybody's thinner and more exercised and more comfortable at gym. It's, it's just an awkward situation. So, so you kind of sneak out without being too obvious and you decide, I think I'll just work out at home. So she goes home, she starts doing some sit-ups, stretches. Occasionally, you know, she goes out and goes for a little walk and a little jog. And at the end of a week, 
She looks at the calendar and checks off. She's doing a good job, and she says, you know what, I'm feeling pretty good about myself. And she steps on the scale and says, oh, crap, is, I, I've hardly lost any weight. I don't know what to do about this. And so she exercises a little more and gets thirsty and goes to the fridge, and she says, oh, I, better, I better drink diet. I better not drink the other kind. So she <laughs> pulls out a diet drink and starts having a drink, and... A couple of weeks later, you know, things kind of slip a little bit more. She misses a few days here and there. And uh, she's getting up at 6 o'clock instead of 5. You know, I don't have to get up at 5 because I'm not going to the gym. I'm working out here at home. So that's sure, a lot of time sure. so I can get up at 6. And, boy, this uh, diet drink would sure taste better if I put my veggies on, on a nice piece of bread. So she orders pizza, and pretty soon she's eating pizza. And the next thing you know... Uh, her diet's kind of gone out the window, and she's eaten the same old stuff she ate before January 1st. And then one day, as she's laying in bed, oh, look at this, it's February 15th, so that's six weeks after she started. She's laying in bed, and 7.30 in the morning, she gets this epiphany. I need some retail therapy. And so she says, what I need to do is just go down and buy myself some bigger clothes, and I'll look good. Now. The question then is, well, what happened to her motivation? And right. one of the challenges that we have with motivation is we, we do this to ourselves more than others, but we also do it to others, and that is if somebody is motivated, you think, oh, well, we must be a good person because I'm motivated. And if you lose your motivation, you think, oh, gosh, I must be a bad person because I'm not motivated. Or we look at people who we think should be more motivated than they are, and we judge them as being a bad person. Right. So we shouldn't do that. That's what this slide tells us. Yeah. Uh, the reason is, mm -hmm. is because uh, there's more to motivation than just listening to the angel or the devil on your shoulder. Your body <laughs> is made up of 50 trillion cells, and it's actually between 50 and 100 trillion. So there's a lot of these little cells, but an amazing thing about your body is that you're not the only person who lives there. In addition to those cells, you have about 500 trillion microbes. Now these microbes live on you and in you, mostly in you. Uh, you have so many microbes that if you stacked them all side by side, they would circle the globe two and a half times. So even though they're tiny, 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 you still got a bunch of those guys in there. Now, I learned this a few years back, and I will confess that when I learned it, I had an identity crisis because it made me wonder, well, am I just, am I more bug or am I more me? Because I thought I was the only guy here, and it turns out, no, I'm just a condominium or an apartment house, and I'm the anchor tenant, but I got a bunch of guys here. So most of these microbes live in your gut. And if you have a healthy gut, then you have a healthier body. The microbes that live in us and on us are actually, it's a symbiotic relationship. It's not like they're just a bunch of hangers on. They actually do things for us that we can't do for ourselves. And so the idea is to have a healthy community, and that means let's be kind to our microbes and then we have a better chance of having a better quality of life. Now, where did we get this? It's called the microbiome. Where did we get our microbiome? Uh, we were born with a lot of it. So if our mother had a, help, a healthy microbiome, she would pass that on to the baby. If the mother has an unhealthy microbiome, she passes that unhealthy one onto the baby. And that's one of the reasons why uh, diseases and body types and attitudes and beliefs are transgenerationally passed down. It's because this micro, this microbiome is actually moved from generation to generation. Now, most of that happens, most of that transfer happens uh, during the actual birth process. If you're born as a baby through the birth canal, on the way out, you actually pick up a lot of this bacteria. If you're born as a C-section baby, you don't have the advantage of picking up that 
microbiome to the extent you do. And that actually will compromise your, your immune system as you get older. So it's better to be vaginally born than C-sectioned. Uh, I know some uh, uh, OBGYNs who deliver C-sections will actually swab the mother's vagina and then rub that swab in the baby's mouth and on the baby's face to get that bacteria over it's for the, the baby. microbiome. It's interesting. Yeah, yeah. Now, if we don't have a healthy microbiome, we, we can't blame that all on our mothers. <coughs> Excuse me, George, I better take a drink here. Just <laughs> talking about this just chokes me up. All, all of those, all of those microbials want to drink. <laughs> I guess, at least the ones in my throat do. Uh, another thing that happens with this is uh, self-inflicted. We may have a healthy microbiome, but if you drink soda, especially diet soda, actually, uh, it kills off a lot of the good bacteria. And if you take an antibiotic, antibiotics are designed to kill uh, microbes and they don't discriminate between the good ones and the bad ones. So if you're taking an antibiotic, you're gonna be killing off a lot of the good stuff with the bad stuff. Now, keep your eye on the right side of this slide because you'll see it change. <clears throat> Wasn't that clever, George? That was clever, I, I yeah. yeah. I'm seeing a lot more of the same ones now. Yeah, so what happens is you, you kill off the, uh, the diversity and all, these microbes are all opportunistic, some more than others. Yeast, as an example, is very opportunistic. And if you have a vacancy, essentially, in your gut, then the remaining microbes will repopulate, they'll multiply to fill the space. And that's why you can get a yeast overgrowth, or they call it SIBO sometimes, it stands for small intestine bacterial overgrowth, spelled S-I-B-O. And um, that is a, a less healthy state. Now, the cool thing about this is that it is your gut bacteria that determine your taste preferences. Your taste buds turn over every every 10 days. You're, you're actually wow. always developing new taste buds. But wow. in, a, in a 10 day period, you'll completely rebuild your taste buds. And the taste buds get built under the direction of the microbes in your gut so that you prefer the food that these guys want to be eating. So if you have more yeast than you should, you'll want more sugar because yeast likes sugar. So you'll have a you know, your appetite will go to that. Now, <laughs> so there you go. Your gut determines your taste buds. Right. Uh, this may sound uh, weird or, you know, like, is that really, can that really happen? Here's a classic example of, of how microbes control us. Uh, this is actually a microbe. It's a parasite called Toxoplasma gondii. Uh, toxoplasmosis is, is what it's called commonly. In order for ta uh, toxoplasmosis to move through a complete life cycle, it has to have two hosts. It needs a mouse and a cat. And so the mouse is where the larva will hatch and grow. But to move into the reproductive cycle, the, the parasite needs to be in a cat. And so what happens is the the parasite will put off a chemical that changes the behavior of the mouse. The mouse will become less cautious and less afraid of cats, which makes them more likely to be eaten by a cat. When the cat eats the mouse, it ingests the parasite. The parasite then multiplies in the cat. The larva is excreted in the feces of the cat. Another mouse comes along, eats the cat poop, and the cycle starts all over again. So, so the microbiome literally influences physical behavior. Exactly. And it happens with us too. You know, your, test, your taste preferences are determined in large part by the guys you're feeding besides you. And so here's our friend who has very quickly degraded from a firm resolution to get into that smaller dress size into falling back into her old eating habits, her old patterns, and it's not because she's a weak person, it's because she's not just her. She's her plus 
500 trillion microbes. Yeah, you got 500 trillion people, microbes, ganging up on you. Yeah. And so that actually plays out through the whole process of motivation. Uh, the, the, uh, let me give you a, a little bit more information about it. The microbes in your gut will stimulate a nerve called the vagus nerve. That's a primary nerve that runs from your brain and it innervates all the organs in your body. If the microbe uh, community in your gut is healthy, it will then create a positive stimulation for the vagus nerve. And when that nerve is stimulated, you feel better. So if you feel better, you stay more motivated. The other thing that happens is the microbiome is primarily responsible for the production of dopamine and serotonin and GABA. Dopamine and serotonin are the two feel-good neurotransmitters. If you have enough of those, you're, you feel happy and content and motivated. If you don't have enough of those, you feel anxious and depressed. And so having a healthy gut has a lot to do with motivation. Now, if this woman, you know, she might need to lose 175 pounds to get into that dress. But if she could lose 10 pounds, uh, that would build her confidence. And if she could lose 20 pounds, she would start to move more easily. And if she could lose 50 pounds, she, people would say, wow, you've lost weight. And that just, you know, strokes her ego. makes her So the, so the closer we get to the achievement of the goal, it's a self-reinforcing process. And this is a picture I pulled off of the internet of a young woman who went from being overweight to not being overweight. You know, if you look at her on the left, she's still an attractive woman. But you look at her on the right and you can see, well, here's a woman who set a goal and achieved her goal. And you can see by the look on her face that she's a lot more confident. So the achievement of any goal is going to have a ripple effect on the motivation that we have and can apply to the achievement of every other goal in our lives. Right. So we've created an info boost, a uh, motivation info boost, and it contains uh, the things you need to be more motivated from the perspective of a healthy microbiome. Okay. Now, the motivation info boost in order to get the most good out of it, it actually does take some conscious effort. And you want to turn it on for 14 days because you want to run through at least one cycle of new taste buds. And you have to be diligent with your diet. You can't turn on this info boost and continue to eat junk and get the benefit that you want. But if you say to yourself, okay, I'm going to, for two weeks, I'm not going to binge out on sugar. Maybe I'm, you know, I'm going to eliminate dairy. I'm going to eat more vegetables. Uh, you know, just you don't have to be a fanatic, but be better. And we all know the things that we can do that would be better. So be better for two weeks. And you turn on the info boost, and this is what happens. So here's our present reality, and I've I've shown some of these slides on other presentations, but. And I keep them up here for a review. So here's our woman. She wants to get into the smaller dress, but her present reality is she's substantially overweight. Her future reality looks like something like this. That's the one she wants. But the challenge is we have a large number, probably an infinite number, of future realities or future possibilities. And one of those for this woman is the perpetuation of her present reality. If she doesn't do anything, she's not going to lose any weight. She'll never get in that dress. And six weeks from now, she can be just in the same position she is today. <clears throat> so the, the determinant of which will be her future reality is determined by what are called future-focused vectors. A vector has two characteristics. It has distance and direction. And you can see these blue uh, spiky things. Those are the future-focused vectors. Now, some of those, in, in terms of the motiv motivation info boost, is a diverse microbiome, healthy microbiome, and that's going to help her move in the direction she wants to go. 
On the other hand, if her microbiome is dysbiotic, it's unbalanced, it's not diverse, it's a, she's got a monoculture of whatever, Goroan insider, that's going to keep her in the same path that she is in currently. Right. Now, because we have an infant a number of these, the question is, well, which ones do I choose and how do I know? I mean, if you didn't know anything about the microbiome, mm -hmm. you might not even think to go there. But what we've done with Limbic Arc is we've created a library in the cloud, and that cloud includes what we call InfoBoost ingredients. They're virtual items, and those are future-focused vectors. That's it. They each carry different information, and that information can have <clears throat> a directional effect on us, a positive effect on um, our future outcomes. The question is then, which one do I choose? And in order to facilitate that, we've created what's called a Spark Scan. The Spark Scan requires two real-time biometric inputs. It's a voice analysis is the first one. Right. And, and the second one is a tactile response. You'll notice in the little uh, window there, you know, we've got the, the voice analysis. What you want to do is you want to talk about the outcome that you want or you can talk about the problem you want to overcome. So in this case, the woman could get, get on the limbic arc and she could say, uh, I want to drop four dress sizes. That would be talking about it positively. Or I want to lose 50 pounds in the next six weeks. Or she could get on there and say, I'm just so fat that I'm disgusted with myself and I, I have a hard time losing weight. It doesn't matter if she's speaking negatively or positively as long as she's on topic. Right. And, and the reason for that is because voice is topic specific. Then after that happens, we then create a target that appears on the screen five times. She touches that. And from those two inputs, we then create what's called a spark. And the spark acts as a catalyst that ignites an algorithm that will then process the library of future focused vectors and give each of them a score. That score is called an outcome ratio, and it's an indication of which item will get you further down the road in the direction you want to go. And then all you do is select the ones, usually the ones with the highest score, and in this case, there's three showing on the side that could be in the, in the InfoBoost uh, motivation. And if you say, well, wait a minute, what does amylase or lactobacillus or molasses, what does that have to do with motivation? You just have to think back on what you're dealing with. What you're trying to produce here is a healthy, diverse microbiome that likes to eat healthy food. Right. And if and if you eat that healthy food, you're going to achieve this goal in this case of being healthier or losing weight and you're going to feel good about it. Right. So you hit the activate button, turns on the information and that information is then communicated to you through what's called a field effect and it it's not a, a conscious communication, it's a subconscious communication. We're talking to the part of your body that processes over 400 million pieces of information a second. So we're talking to the smartest part of you. And the cool thing about Limbic Arc is you can use it for anything. Right. You know, if well, and that was my question because I know that weight is a great example uh, for motivation, um, but, but we, there, are, there are a lot of things that can motivate you. Uh, success in your career, you know, happiness with your family. And, and it's, it's, basic, it's based on the same principles, right? It is. And, and so let's say that I wanted a better relationship with my wife. You can use the Motivation Info Boost, uh, but what you would do is you would talk about, I would talk about, oh, I'd like to have a better relationship with my wife, or I'd like to achieve more in my career. Uh, because the body is so interconnected, I mean, you know, your gut biome has it produces your neurotransmitters, which, which affect the way you feel. And if you feel good, you're going to act better. Right. Uh, so it's just this circle, and you can't, uh, you can't say that one part of you is your brain and one part of you is your gut. Uh, they work together. You know, right. one part of you is an emotion, and the other part of you is your logical side. It all works together. And if you improve anything, you improve everything. 
So um, interesting question, Dr. Cook. Um, I know that there are lots of different info boosts and, and you can run up to three info boosts at a time. Um, if you're interested in um, say, um, well, let me pick one, weight or even prosperity, would, would it be good to run prosperity and motivation at the same time? Sure, I think that's a good idea. George, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. That's my last slide. Okay. So. Great. So um, I would encourage everybody to take a look in um, your Limbic Arc app for the Motivation Info Boost. Pay attention to these new ingredients. And um, I, I think that it's what a, what a powerful, powerful tool and a very timely tool. Thank you, Dr. Cook. So I'd like to do a quick reminder here that um, <clears throat> if you would like to submit questions for Dr. Cook, Go ahead and send it to askdrcook at limbicarc.com. We get quite a few questions, and I know that on these calls we can only answer a few. But, uh, Dr. Cook, I've got uh, a couple of really quick questions for you. Some you've maybe heard before, but I'd like to get your, your take on it. Okay. Number one, do my info boosts still work or still keep working even when I turn my phone off? The answer is yes. Your phone is your access to the Limbic Arc database. When you set up an account, we, we create for you your account in the cloud. And from then on, you use your phone or your computer to get access to that account. Yeah. Once you hit activate, the activation occurs from the server to your body through the field effect. Your phone or your computer, you can turn them off as soon as, it's, as, soon as you hit the go button. Awesome. And so it just, it'll just keep working. Yep. Um, question number two, um, why do some boost ingredients have several names in the title? The reason we do that is because items are known by different names. And when you do a search in the library, if you type in a name that is not what we've put in as the primary name, it'll still show up in your search. Right. Uh, I can't think of an example, but that's that's the reason. Well, there are lots of there are lots of ingredients that are known by different things in different regions of the world, even. So. Yeah. Okay. Uh, final question. This one uh, a little more substantial. What is the influence of the limbic arc technology on our DNA and the entire genetic system? Does is this really make a difference with our our genetic composure? Well, the limbic arc is not a medical device. It does not diagnose, it does not treat any, any medical condition. And I don't think that it has any effect on DNA or genetics any more than uh, any other information might. So, for example, uh, well, I, don't, I can't think of an example, but let me just say our bodies run on information. And if you get information at a conscious level and you act on that information, it's going to have an effect. Right. We're dealing at a subconscious level with the expectation that the effect will actually be more immediate and more lasting because we're talking to the part of you that's smarter. Right. Um, but there is no intention with limbic arc to go in and tweak DNA or tweak anything genetic. I just don't think that's necessary in order to affect a positive outcome. Right, and so, and so what happens is your body will respond just like it would to a physical product, but now it's responding um, in, in a different way through a different network. Yeah, it, I don't know that it's the same as a physical product, uh, but even physical products have an arrangement of things, molecules, that carry with them their own information packets. So right. again, at a, at a very basic level, at an energetic level, it's all information, and that's now, what we're dealing with. Dr. Cook, what a, what a fabulous thing. I can't wait to try my motivation info boost. I can't wait to see these new ingredients, and um, I now would remember, just... In remember, George, you gotta apply some, to get the best out of this, you know, you gotta apply some conscious effort you, you, gotta, you know, clean up your diet and, and, uh, at well, least and, two, at least and you know, and, and, and maybe it's just a boost, you know, I mean, we're, we're all trying to do this and, and maybe yeah. if we just get this little extra boost, 
that's that makes the difference for us. And so that's that's what's so exciting about Lumbic Arc. So um, I would remind everyone that uh, we will um, have our next call with Dr. Cook on Wednesday, February 24th at 5 p.m. Be sure and put that on your calendar. And uh, of course, um, you can go ahead and click on um, go go to the website and you can click on past call with Dr. Cook topics. And uh, there's a trove of information there. You're welcome to check on that and, and replay those monthly calls. Also, um, we will be sending a replay link out shortly after we close our call today. So again, Dr. Cook, um, thank you. We, we look forward to next month. And also I might mention that uh, next month's topic is going to be emotions. Another exciting topic. So um, looking forward to looking forward to that. Again, Dr. Cook, thank you for your time. Thanks, George. Hey, and, it's fun to be here. Thanks, everyone. All right. Take care. Bye.